Welcome back everyone to ESL 1 Birmingham, the UK's first ever Dota 2 Major. Our final day has begun with Pain Gaming taking the lead in the third place playoff in a 32 minute game, their third fastest win of the tournament. Can they convert it though into a 2-0 win? That's the question that our panel will answer very shortly. But first, let's catch up with Sir Action Slacks, who's backstage right now with a member of the Pain family. That's right, Red Eye. We've got Pain Gaming's very own manager. How are you doing, sir? I'm good, thanks. All right. I also hear you're Pain Gaming's life coach as well, right? I mean, it's what they say, but I'm, I'm not when, when to say it, so. All right, all right. Can you give me any life coach lessons? What's one thing I could do to improve my life? I actually have none. I'm so sorry. That's very bad news for me. Okay, great. <laughs> well, anyway, sir, a fantastic first game. You guys went out there, a lot of aggression. How are the boys feeling? I mean, they're feeling great, and uh, they're happy, they're confident, and I guess you guys just saw it in the first game. I hope you have a second game with the same pace, actually. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're going to see them, you know, not getting in that first or second in this tournament, but a lot more coming out from Pain. What's next on the menu for you guys? What are you focusing on now? I think um, this year has been a year of great improvement for us. Um, we're coming in from SA Dota, and we're showing that, like, it's possible for everybody. You just got to stick to your guts, stick to your dreams, and work hard, man. That's what we've been doing. and. I guess it's working out because every tournament we play, I feel like we we get better. Yep. So, I mean, just keep doing it. The crowd can certainly see that. I mean, Payne's performance is just on the up and up. Uh, we got a lot of fans out there in the audience right now. A lot of guys want to do some chanting, want to do some cheering. Any uh, suggestions what those guys should be yelling out? I mean, just, just yell your hearts out. Uh, there's nothing specific, just cheer on, guys. <laughs> All right, sounds good. I'm always keen for a good duster. Duster, duster, duster is definitely like the best. Just yell, <laughs> yell out duster. That's just good. All right, well, we're going to have some duster fans out there and a lot more pain gaming action coming your way. Red Eye, what'd you think, buddy? Yeah, I know, I agree. Yeah, plenty of chance. Um, Jake, I just want to say, I, I can offer you a life tip. Oh, yeah. Never change, buddy. Oh, okay, thanks, Red Eye. He's great, I love him. Uh, fantastic Sir Action Slags, of course. Uh, just, he's just like a spy, he just gets everywhere. I don't know how he gets into some of the places that he does. Uh, the three men on the panel are already willing to bring in their thoughts as we look ahead to game number two, though we're back with Nahaz, with Fogged and with Cap Gents. Uh, can Payne do this now? Can they convert this one? Because we, we said at the start of the game, they, they might have more hunger for this. Oh, and it's and true. one up, like it. does that just make him even more hungry and maybe Fnatic are this, you know, like, ugh. Third place. It's tough. It's a big letdown that you had emotionally yesterday against Fana uh, by Fnatic. I think much more so than Pain. I think everybody expected VP to do very well at this sure. event. But you mentioned some HFN stats. I want to hear that chant because in almost 1,400 Luna games that we have on record since TI5, it's only the 16th time that she's hit 20k net worth by 28 minutes. He was 7k ahead of the Universe Darks here at that point. Absolutely wonderful. Yeah, and you bring him up, and I think this is the this is what I'm looking at from this team is just make him the superstar. Yeah, just pick these. You know, Weha can play these Dragon Knights, these Death Prophets, and just let HFN play his Slark, let him play his Luna, let him just go absolute farm mode. You on board with the HFN train? Okay. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, I think uh, HFN has definitely shown himself to be one of the most talented carries uh, at this tournament, and he's long been the bright spot for Pain. Uh, if you go back, it was always like. It felt like Pain Gaming were kind of running around in HFN. <laughs> like, for better or worse, HFN was kind of always farming during those times, right? Where it felt like he just had to, like, carry... He just knew from the get-go. It's like 10 minutes in, the game's not looking so hot. He's like, all right, guys, I'm going to go full farm mode here, see if I can pull this one out. Um, and I guess all of that, maybe it's just like... Uh, you know, higher elevation is just a better training for him back then, just because he has now become one of the best. The impact of Weehar as well, Alan? I mean, I think he has been a great stabilizer in that game and throughout this tournament. I, I, I think it's funny because he had that interview where he said it's like they're playing the game and the other four teammates are speaking Portuguese and I'm just playing a pub. Sure didn't look like it in that no, game. He made some great team plays. Indeed it does. Right, we are into game number two's draft with no surprises so far in the first two bands. And there are there plenty you go. of... There Get rid of the Luna. In. Fans in the crowd. Yeah, yeah, this is good. This is a good approach by Fnatic. I like this. All right, balloon is gone. No Focus this time round. Focus uh, on H. 
F, yeah. and, and these are the same bands that Payne have been pulling out uh, a lot throughout this tournament. Obviously, we've seen the Wisp ban continually by them. The Night Stalker is another one that they ban a lot as well. It looks like they're trying to take advantage of the lanes. I think they're probably going to just ban the Undying again and just look to do leave the option open for them to, uh, to put themselves in those aggro tri lanes or yep. you know unorthodox things that we don't really see too often to make sure that Tabo can have a game as well. Because sure, like that last game, he may not have farmed the greatest in that bottom lane, but he got his levels, and that's yep. all he really needed on a pango in that game. Yeah, the Doom is the other one that the Pain don't seem to like playing against yeah. Alan. Uh, they have picked it once themselves here, but other than that, they pretty much banned it I'll first phase. And, and I think it got through the second phase it before it was yeah. banned. The Clockwork, is another. that's another hero that both teams rely on uh, very heavily at the four position. So Bane or Undying will go through, right? Yeah, so, so they so take Undying. Undying. Goes, Bane goes through, and Fnatic pick. There you the go. Bane. And focus on the laning phase. I and because they're smart. their first pick, they can actually go for something like the Doom if they wanted to, because Clockwork's ban and Ancient Apparition, whether it's picked or not, will be revealed oh. in the first one. Two I kind of want to see a YOLO they, bounty pick. Do they Naga Jakiro? They've got that open too. Okay, yeah, yeah. It's very good versus Bane. You have two very long distance ways to cancel the Fiend's Grip in a lot of those situations. You're strong lanes, and this is that's their comfort. And it's going to be Naga Disruptor or Naga Jakiro more than likely, because that's just it's very comfort for these guys. But the Sanking is also left out there, so. I'm wondering if maybe they changed it, but they didn't. I was well, thinking, with, yeah, with the, the other Naga. combo would be Sankey Disruptor. Sankey Disruptor was the other like combo. It's one-two yep. punch, either way. Let's see which one they go for, though. It's Disruptor, Jakiro more than likely, unless they want to yeah. do something a bit out of the box from their style, what they usually do. Yeah, and I think Payne, you know, a lot of the other Naga lineups that we've seen from other teams have felt very, very passive before this event, but Payne with their Naga lineups at this, uh, at this tournament feel like they still play that faster pace. Yeah, they don't use it so much as like the combo every single time, let's say, mm -hmm. but they when they do this, you have to you pretty much have to ban Enigma now in the fourth pick because you have to, you know, the threat of Tavo with the Naga is too much. Okay. So they go for the Disruptor. I, I, I think I do like the Disruptor a little bit better. Gives you the same aspect of being able to cancel uh, Bane and Fiend from far duration. And I mean, Disruptor sometimes just, if you're on a roll, if you're on a roll, this hero just really makes you completely snowball out well, of control. The, the thing I really like about Disruptor lately is that I've seen a lot of teams hiding it in aggro dueling. They'll pick a very, very strong off, run at you off laner, and they'll play the Disruptor behind him as a ranger on that lane, rather than trying to ask him to defend a safe laner. Mm -hmm. yeah, I've seen like the triple clarity kind of thing yeah, coming out. Yeah, exactly. So if I don't pick out an early lash. That's a, they've, they've not been playing much lash, right? No. I don't think I saw them pick it at all this tournament. And they did not. I don't think it was banned at all by them. And they banned it a couple of times, actually, versus some of the teams. Yeah, so since, if you go all the way back to 7-1-0, they have run it seven times in three different positions. Uh, Abed, Pai, and DJ have all played it. OK. Hmm. So I think this is just a solidifying lanes, right? I think that's what that tells me, that they picked these two up a bat for Fnatic. The Pain had a lot of, uh, had a lot of <laughs> options here as well. <laughs> Very good. They have a lot of options here. They've, they've opened with these two folk a number of times. Yeah. Benaga and uh, Disruptor, they can go Beastmaster from here. They can go Slark from here. They've, they've shown a lot of different ways of going through. Oh, I, I think that was a, a big part of the Leshrac pick. Yeah, is that you've taken, the Slark. Yes, yeah. Yeah. you've taken out the Gyrocopter and the Luna. Yeah. You better have an answer to the Slark if Pain pick it. I wonder if they're going to ban the, uh, that Enigma. That's the one curious thing to me, because I think the Enigma could still be, still hold a threat. I wonder if Pain, pa Pain don't run this here very much, but I wonder if they take the Nyx Assassin, try and force that Lushrak into a support role, mm -hmm. where he doesn't really counter the Slark nearly as much. But, but don't they have, they don't have room for Nyx Assassin, right? Like, unless they're going to be running Naga Assassin yeah, in that's position true, or that's something. True. Yeah, that's true, For me, that was why I, I like Lushrak, because then you can also protect the Lushrak core. They're not doing it so far, they just ban DP, but, Banning heroes like Lycan, like Conqueror, no, who are threatened. For the record, uh, I was thinking quite a bit. I was thinking more if you picked up the next assassin that you slide him over to core, but that's Do not position. Yeah, that's not looked very good. It's. I think it's too weak in lanes now. Yeah. I think this, the game is so oriented based off how well you're doing that to those like 10, 12 minutes. I don't know. The only thing that we've seen though, look at how Pain has played around the bounty when they've had it. Look at how they play around the slug. They play well, so well with those vision providing heroes. Yeah. I was pretty surprised that they didn't go for the bounty at all when it's been left, when most people were banning it. Yeah, I thought soon. they were going to do it first series. Because yeah, yeah, me too. Same. So they're banning. Okay, so they banned the TA and the Death Prophet. I don't 
hmm. banning Roche, Roche threatening heroes okay. when there's a Naga, right? Because you don't want to have to deal with, like, we need to fight this Roche, but we're fighting into a Naga sleep, so we could just get turned on it and they just finish the Roche. Still, they have the Leshrac, so the TA one is a little bit... Uh, yeah, I would have weird, preferred, right? like, the Lycan Ban. Right? Because with the Lesh, you can just eat through the Refraction. Yeah, go right back to the Pango. Yeah. They, they did no. that the last time they've run this. Not, the, they did it with a Naga Jakiro they against did. Liquid, but uh, I think it serves the same purpose here. He's going to build those util utility items, right? He's going to try to go for Pipe, Guardian Greaves, probably like something like that versus this uh, Lesh Rack in this occasion. Now, the, the Doom's still in the pool for Fnatic, but it loses so much value now that you uh, you have that Naga Sleep to reset the fight. Yeah. I still think Doom against Pango is pretty good, though. It's good against Pango, but like you said, I think it's so scary to pick that when you're, you just disengage with sleep and you're like, uh-oh. You just used our Doom, which is much more crucial than having a Naga sleep for team fights. Oh, uh, Pain Band uh, on the Night. I was you know, going to say there's a threat of the Leshrac uh, core here for sure if you have an Omni Knight to back it up. I think the lesser hero is a bad one. I haven't seen too much of that this yeah. tournament. Uh, also, the, the Omni Bane dual lane, right? Oh, yeah. Whenever v I see VP run that, I'm like, oh my goodness, this actually looks OP. It actually feels like Omni finally has real good lane pressure when he's enabled by the Bane. Yeah. I think this is a poor Leshrac, guys. Yeah. So what, what HFN hero are you looking at? I'm looking at something like either the Medusa or the Morphling for this game. Something oh. that can just completely control the game by himself. And he's got a, I mean, he can turn into any of these three heroes and I he think can do pretty well. I think it's, if it's the Medusa, you pick, I think you pick a hero here, like an Ember that we or HFN can play. Yeah. And then you save the Medusa for fifth. Ember may not be the best because of the combo on the other side of Fnatic. I, I don't know though. It's mostly magic damage. Hmm. I'd be okay with um, any BKB physical damage dealer because you've got a good amount of magic and you've got the hard piercer from Pango to set you up. Yeah, but what's left? I mean, maybe oh. maybe life stealer. I think life stealer. Life jug? stealer. Yeah. Life stealer. Jug. Just uh, I just don't, I, I mean, I'm not a big troll guy here. It's I think you, 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 there's so much pressure. You want to go battle for your to farm, but then so much pressure on you to have that BKB by the early 20s. This is a, I've done a very similar draft to what they've used before. They used the against OG, and they <laughs> ended with an Ember Troll, which they lost to. Mm. I think I like one of the other two carries more. I was thinking, like, I just want a super hard carry, the Morph Deuce or something like that. So I don't think they can just make him make him shine on. Yeah, Medusa is the other one they've ended with. Yeah, I just, a similar. Uh, Draft, like, Similar draft, right? Yeah. yeah. I'd be I a little bit open. scared of. of uh, the only reason I don't like Morph is just because the initiation, like the combination of burst and initiation from Fnatic. Well, I mean, very light. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Morph. All right. right. Yeah. All right. Nice. Okay. You're right. I, I just think they want to put him on a hero that he will literally win this yeah, game. Yeah. 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 That's the only reason why I was thinking that this, this is the, these super late game heroes. That's why I was doubling down on them. I don't know. I just feel like you, you pick a life stealer there, he hops inside Pango, and it's just mass hysteria in those fights. And Fnatic can still come back with something like a life stealer. Not a good matchup, though. Morphling loves oh, playing Morphling. versus Lifesteal. Yeah, he just yeah, turns into him, open wounds, rages, and then turns back to Morphling. Slark's kind of okay with Morph, but he doesn't like the rest of the heroes. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, for Fnatic, it's hard always to fit OD into lineups. I mean, this, you, you, your, your hero could be the one that's coming up from Fnatic, just saying. Yeah, I mean, you yeah, have the setup. This is definitely an invoker setup. But it's weird. Yeah, I, I like that a lot better. I think... I mean, as the last pick. As, as the fifth. Yeah. You want... Ooh, you it's want Leshrac and Voker as your two cores against a Morph? That's tough. We want something that he can just go off on, right? It's a little bit awkward, but... Is the lane a good for Pain? Yes. In, uh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Looks like a good lane again. Yes. And, and we, we Lena is a great... I think that wins the mid against, wins the mid lane against most of the heroes Fnatic can pick. Likely to be banned. Yeah, I guess Fnatic does just need an Envy hero. I guess it would be a little weird having him play Lush and the Invoker. I, I, th I think he, well, that, not recently. Not recently, yeah. he hasn't. I guess we just want it so badly that it's just in my head. <laughs> I know, no, I do. I, I'd love to see it. I see a lot of setup, that's all. I see Sanking, Lush, Rock, and Bane, and I'm like, ooh. The, uh, I, th 
think that the Ember Spirit was a better ban for Pain, uh, just because it naturally yes. moves into that. Like, you don't have that awkward invoker time. Yeah. Right, it, where he's like, downtime, I can only sun strike people. Yeah. Synergy wise, it just, Ember would have made so much more sense. And they lacked, I mean, they lacked the control. And yeah, the synergy. Ion yeah. Shell Carrier, uh, they don't really have the greatest catch for him, they have Disruptor, but it's not. Not the most reliable at times. If we go, like, either Ember Spirit or Invoker would have been, like, you an entirely magic damage lineup. Are you okay with that? It's Edict. It's not great. Edict is, uh, Edict. Yeah, it's, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when you're like, oh, no. Edict's my physical damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. You've got the Darkseer level 15 talent. <laughs> Give me that plus 90 damage. It's judo chop. Is it 15? 10. I don't know. It might be. I think it's, be 10. 10. I think it's 10. 10? Yeah. yeah, it's get 90 damage at 10. But still, that 90 damage. Fnatic taking, taking their time. Yeah. Taking their time. Yeah. What's what's their pick? Oh wow, oh, the Pugna. Okay, so it's like a Timber or something. <laughs> Maybe it is Invoker, dude. It could be Invoker. That's, really that's, could like, be. that's even more young. No, no just a DK. Yeah, I'm with Everyone you. Everyone boos. I'm with I you, like crowd. <laughs> no, Hawk. that's a lot of Hawk down for this Morphling. Yeah, really this is. Morphling really hates is. life right now. He's he's got uh, two different Blink stunners. He's got a lot of stun to follow it up. And even if he does get super farmed, there's going to be a Darkseer that makes a wall copy of him. Yeah. This and it gives them some physical damage, at least some. But you have... Good tower pressure from this lineup, too. Do you still like the Lena? Oh, no. not as much. I think, no. it, I think Lena's playable. I think you could Kunkka, too. Give yourself a little more team fight into that song setup. Maybe it'd be yeah. just a BKB carrier. OK. Like we said, there's not really a lot of physical on Fnatic still. Whenever you see like the the final like DK pickup, it opens up your mids quite a bit. Right. So there's a lot of mid melee heroes that. Hmm. And Lena would be the obvious one, but what else yeah. is not so obvious for we? Yeah, it's Lena. Yeah, that's. All right, I, I, I'm I'm telling you, talk about third place matches, but these are two serious drafts. Yeah. This yeah. is, these are not have fun mess around no, drafts. No, there's no messing around whatsoever. This is serious stuff. They want to win this one, and obviously Fnatic want to try and get back in it. Alan, which way? Fnatic. Fogged. I like Fnatic's draft, but I'm going Pain all the way. Pain's been playing better, but it's going to go Fnatic. Okay. Uh, two for Fnatic and one for Pain. Ladies and gentlemen, it is time for game number two. Can Pain take it home and finish third? Let's find out. Fnatic versus Pain, game two. Let's get it on. We got serious people in the house, serious drafting, serious players, serious business, serious blitz. How you doing, man? I'm good. Are you serious? So. <laughs> That's new. <no>. Pain, <laughs> immediately go for the smoke. What a fun game. At least we get to see Alina. I know the crowd doesn't like DK. I don't know why. It's like a fun hero. He stuns, he flies around, he takes towers, he pressures. Dude. Don't boo that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, he, he did pretty good. Like when EE dived uh, in game number one, if it wasn't for him, those creeps would have been mopped up and the Eclipse would have just gone onto creeps and then we would have had a boring Luna. Yeah, DK, DK took towers. He forced action last game. <laughs> well, let's see how it goes this game. It's obviously in the hands of our bed this time around, and uh, it'll be Weeha's Alina. And once again, we see Pain Gaming committing multiple numbers towards the top lane. So HFN on the Morph lane, the panel was like, you've got to grab him a hero who can just win the game with. Is, is this, is this a good game for a Morphling as well? Actually, is any game not a good game for a Morphling? Uh, I saw some questionable Morphlings throughout this tournament. You have a good amount of lockdown for this hero, good burst. And if you look at Fnatic's lineup, I mean, they have a heavy amount of damage, but a lot of it is just dissipated over time. So he might have an easier time in this game. Looks like that bottom lane is, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm fearing for Tavo. Why? Because it's a Darkseer-Bane combination I against had, him. He was against a Darkseer and uh, Sand King last game. Yeah. You think Tavo cares? 
Oh, oh, TP's already coming up towards the top. That's a lot of damage onto Eternal Envy. The Thunderstrike doing its work. His extra stun, keeping Disruptor out of the fight. King RD uh, got the Riptide off. Oh, does this TP out? Is able to be successful. And King RD is still trying to be a pain in the butt. He's able to actually hit with the Riptide Eternal Envy and the negative two armor for King RD. Losing life as his own TP scroll into the trees. Won't work, pile high die. The man who was under threat of being first plotted in game one is the man to claim it in game two. So that's a free wave of XP for HFN. Completely unbothered there. I'm not sure if they're going to be okay with it, but it's not the worst thing in the world. It's it's Envy hasn't touched a creep yet. It's it's a kill at least. Even if it actually yeah, it goes to your support, not even a turtle Envy. They gonna need a nice big tanky Latrak, but Mango Consumption to go into the Split Earth. Highlight Eyes got the Brain Sap level one. So King RD to the trees doesn't have a lot of life, but it's enough to play with. And the Revenge is there, HFN. Not only does he get that extra wave of experience, he'll get the kill onto DJ. They're just continuing to get it bigger and bigger as DJ collects the tips. Holla, 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 get tipped. He doesn't care, man. He's got like 50 battle pass points. Love it. Forest Strike, here we go again. Eternal Envy, follow up stun. This time it's going to be dusted to full. Lightning has arrived, so the spill damage kicks into King RD. He's dropping down low, and they get the secondary one slow. Forest Strike over towards HFN. He needs life. Stick Charge will give him that. Pylai's low, but it's a triple kill for the Fnatic safe lane. Pylai die claiming three out of the four kills the Fnatic have got so far. Pi needed something like that. Get yourself started. We see what Solo can do with the Bane. Very good early start. The Creep Wave is going to push in very aggressively, though. Mm -hmm. That's going to allow Morphling to just sit up there, get all that XP. As Fnatic still splitting it between three heroes. So this is like one of those fun lanes for, for Pain. Like, it's exactly what they want. They get early fighting. They're going to keep looking for more and more. They'd love Eternal Envy. In Snare, they don't have it. They only have... Well, they didn't even level Glimpse because Duster couldn't get in range. That's an interesting way to go, King RD. Just straight out of the lane, wrap around the side. You can't really mess with this tri lane. A lot of stuns, a lot of nukes on the side of Fnatic. At least with the first early levels, no waveform yet. Ah, oh, Ben's so low, Weeha. Trying to get real close to rip him down. He knows there's an illusion rune in bottom, he can just bottle up. That's because uh, Pain Gaming committed both of their observer wards to watch the runes, the to watch best. the rotations onto the mid. Trying to make sure that we beats our bed. So far, having a pretty good lane right now. Ooh, just dropped up. Wall won't hold Pylai die. And uh, it doesn't look like King RD really wants to be held there either. Anybody gets stunned at this point, they are liable to die as DJ. Looking for an angle right now, but Envy backing up with the creep wave. Smart thing to do right now. He really needs to find levels. You're finally going to get now is, is level three. So the two points up in Lightning, they've got that, that better magical burst damage. But it still seems kind of rough for Pain Gaming to survive if they do get, if they do get stunned. Nightmare into that or Burrow Strike will do the work. The best lane so far for Fnatic CS-wise has definitely been the bottom lane. Universe went 28 for zero. He just ran all the way back to base. So a lot of lost time. The Tavo has just been sitting in the lane. Yeah, but we saw that last game too, where Universe had more or less a free lane. Took the tower very early on with the trade in the mid lane. And it still didn't really seem to matter very much as Abed getting zoned back a little bit. Just hits his level 5. DJ not going to get the rune. It was, it was the control factor, right, from Universe. Like, he went for the sustain, he went for the pipe build, trying to keep his team alive, and then just a couple of miss initiations oh, from the Fnatic lineup. This, RD. however, does not miss. It is King RD. Wall comes in. He'll ensnare. He's got a couple of stick charges to survive. Gets to the other side of the wall. DJ is so low. Adaptive Strike and Thunder Strike will do the work. Nightmare. King RD wants to get away, but the Brain Tap from Pile I Die. Gives him a bit of a tip for tat. Now Lashrak actually isolating Duster. Morphling is chasing down Pile I Die. The Glimpse trying to create a little bit of space. No Duster. No wall up to the other side of the wall. He will go down. Envy finds that kill. Pile I Die. This is still on the heavy chase. HFN. He hasn't got the waveform. He just wants a couple of hits into Pile I Die. And he'll get the two of them. One of them being the adaptive strike. And space, as you said, created by wasting Morphling's time. Yeah, this is going to give Envy a free lane, at least for the time being. <laughs> the torn block of Tarbo looks with the start to try and cancel Universe from getting the extra bounty room, but it does not happen. Meanwhile, we have solo kill. He hit level six. Laguna Blade came up and then popped. 
They're all tipping Abed. Poor guy gets the death. Okay, I've now got my new favorite sound. It's the double block. Top lane, they're going to look to fight again. Disruptor walks straight past DJ. Burrow strike out. Bay oh, brain stun. sap and the stun. Duster cannot survive that kind of magical burst damage. Turns around quickly for a thunder strike onto the Bane, but HFN as well as King RD. Okay, well, it won't matter when Tarbo jumps up. Jumps in for the swashbuckle. It connected. Eternal Envy is low, but then Tarbo permanently controlled. They don't have a Barra Strike back up just yet, but then again with the Lightning, the slow pilot eye brains up in five seconds time, but they want to dive this. Barra Strike is off cooldown now. Tavo's rotation just completely whips. Just gets stunned. Hit after hit. Wasn't able to get that ulti off. That's so much experience that, uh, the, like, obviously they split it three ways, but it's their solo lane of the pain gaming. Look at Envy. The offensive tip back. <laughs> I feel like this guy's been BM'd all week. That's that. gets a little bit back. He waits until Paint Gaming Fortify as well, so there's efficiency. He knows he can't get any last hits in it, so he's got the time to use the chat wheel. Yeah, Tavo has to jump back down the bottom lane. Universe has been having a more of a free time down there, pulling the creep waves over, forcing the creep, uh, the creep wave into the tower top lane. Wall is up, fire strike forward, King RD. Not a healthy man, but the way four men, DJ hiding under the sandstorm. Eternal Envy doesn't have a lot of mana play with his Arcane Booster off cooldown in two seconds time. Now they get their mana back up again, they can look for the continuous ability spam on top. They actually have no way to get him out of Sandstorm. Ah, bad. Starting to stabilize a little bit when it comes to CS at the very least. He is beating Weeha by just one. Of course that first death to him solo is still going to cost him quite a bit when it comes to the net worth. That's where the Lina is dominantly on top. Weeha's going to want this fight on bottom lane. He came down for the Shrine. It was very, very late, but Rolling Thunder, they need to stop him. Dark Sea, a perfect light strike away from Weeha. Waveform in, and Laguna. It's a low call down. Hey, why not? Only 70 seconds. Ensure the kill. No escaping Dark Sea, and now HFN has space to farm. Yeah, absolutely executes him, as he should. It's so a Lina rotating in for a Dark Sea. You want to try to get him that gold. Continue to let him build momentum as Envy is hot on his trails, only 300 gold behind, and right now, die. Highlight die. Wall him up, the Nightmare is there, instantly taken off, they can get the Riptide, allowing Tarmo to initiate forward. Weeha, second kill in the span of a minute. And actually think about going mid lane, or is it going to be, uh, it's just SK Barra striking away. There's a lot of numbers arriving for Pain Gaming in this mid lane. Add pressure to Arbeb, where he's probably wanting to burn Dragon Form and, and uh, attack that tier one tower. They're just trying to keep Abed away from the tower as much as he can, so he doesn't get the free Dragon Form into just hitting it. That's why when Riha rotates down the bottom lane, you see King RD immediately make the rotation in a mid, soak up the XP, push the wave back. Yes, Bane. you're allowing the Dragon Knight to farm, but you're keeping them off the tower. Bane's on the run. It's oh, suddenly a level one glimpse. It's the moment when you're eight and a half minutes in, you realize your disruptor is level three, just because of the tri lanes that have been going on. Ah, it's like the casual five position life. Fresh iron shell on Mr. Sada. You're not going to mess with that guy. <laughs> it's a 425 movement speed Sada to the uh, 371 of an Aga. Unless they can kill it off straight away, it's, it's good money. That's 200 gold, that's a hero. That is a grown man, Toby. Yeah. Just like a hero, it's difficult to kill. So, Envy's getting more space up on top lane. He's building in for the Yule Scepter, so... You say that, easy and good initiation. That creep has triple the health of Duster. Wait, does it? It's actually... True. And then Uni Universe just turns on it. Says, no, nope, sorry, I want to stun now. I don't want regeneration. It's so the best one to get just because you can back him in it. Mm -hmm. Well, Nightmare's out. Over on Weeha. Uh, I say that it ain't the real one. Pilot I fell for it, but then the stomp creates a little bit more space, but not enough as King RD pushes in from the side. Pangalia ensures a quick kill. Universe is ensnared up, wants to keep this run going, but difficult when you're rooted to the ground and you're being hit by the rolling ball to wave forward. Forward he doesn't go from Morphling. He's too far away. HFN. He's hoping his teammates can finish the top the ensnare. It will connect, and who's there waiting? DK wants to help out, but a quick shield bash in. Tavo finds the pickoff in the wall. It's fantastic, but they don't have a follow-up. In fact, it's Fnatic who think they have the follow-up with the Nightmare, but decide against it. 10-minute rune, minute rune on the way. Highlight die, gonna find the haste rune. Maybe pick all four of them up.
for Fnatic as DJ already claimed the two at top. They see him grab it. Can't really do a whole lot about that. That's such a big net worth swing every time you get four of those. Passes Real good catch. Point. Nice glimpse on top. Pulls him back into the light strike array. Eternal Envy. Thought he was safe. Hasn't had a lot of pressure up here. Even DJ was in the trees to help him out. But that doesn't work either as DJ has to borrow strike away. Searched up for some distance under the mid lane. The tower. The dive is out and King RD will die. Arbeb pushing with Catapult and Dragon form up. It's the dream for a DK. And the trade-off here is that HFN just continues to farm. We've seen what this guy can do with any amount of farm. But most likely finally going to lose his mid lane. This is what they feared. They were trying to keep the Naga here. Keep this from happening, but... When level up Fiend's grip. Oh, he's got the angle. Die. He's uh, nightmaring himself, being knocked around and knocked around and knocked, knocked around. Tavo. Doing the work. Lightning slow, however. He can't jump. Okay, never mind. Of course, he can jump up. He's got more sparkle in one second time, too. Mid lane, maybe a little bit of trouble for our bed as he's uh, not gonna. Actually, the glimpse was already used. That's why he drum charges and runs away. That is one of the worst places to be against the Pango. It's so easy for him to crash into the walls repeatedly. Pi had absolutely no chance there. Try to sleep himself. We're getting double Yule Scepters arriving soon. One for Weeha. In fact, I think it's already coming on the Courier. And uh, yeah, sorry, I was wrong before us. Uh, NB. He's he going, should switch. Yeah, he's, he's going for a Bloodstone. If he goes to the Yule Scepter, he just doesn't have the HP to survive the Lina Burst. And once Lina gets Yules, it's a free kill for him every single time. Weeha stacking this way for himself. Do you, do you worry about going for the Bloodstone really early on? Like, is there other ways you can get the HP? Because my concern is the Lina goes for a fight, and you're going to start losing charges really early on. Yeah, but what item do you get for health? Yeah. It's also really nice for Les, just because he needs the mana to spam out his level 1 ult. It's like the point booster alone just gives you so much value. But Envy's trying to play this jungle style on Lesh. He's very under-leveled right now. He's full three levels behind this yeah. Lina, at least. I'm gonna smoke up and look for a fight. DK is the end of a, drag, uh, a double damage room, but uh, he doesn't have the, the cover of the smoke. So this will be all on Bane. Fiend's Grip, as well as Lestrak, should be enough to find a pick. They if pink they it, can, though. If they can find an opening. They know. Scan connects easily. Does Dyer go for their own? Tapo might be the target here. He's going to run right into Pylai Die. Gets Fiend script up. Yep, support's on the way. Our has got the Dragon Tail follow up. So if they need it, actually, Burning Dragon form. Envy hits the split earth. A much needed kill for him. 300 gold. Glimp's going to go onto Pylai Die, pulling him back in. But you've still got the Friends of Fnatic nearby. And Naga Siren is trying to get over. Actually, she's going to get in trouble. There's a Barrow Strike with Nine Shell out. It's the Song of the Siren that she wanted to bring towards the mid lane to give the control. And just because of that came into the killing zone, the rest of Fnatic's Song is out. But the Iron Shell was still on the Sand King. She burns the ultimate as well as herself. And that's a long cooldown. Oh, he waited so long to do that. Thought he was going to get outside the range of that, but it barely bites him. Final tickle, do it. Universe picks up the last hit there as they get back-to-back -back kills. Oh, we've seen this before. The question is, how does Fnatic continue that momentum? They opt to hit these Ancients instead of going for this bottom lane, and this is kind of what Nahas talks about on the panel all the time when it comes to Fnatic is they often just opt to go for the farm. You farm up your next item and not just push the objective. Yeah, and I feel like Fnatic is just way too hesitant about that sometimes. Oh, mid lane. Highlight I doesn't have Fiend's Grip, so uh, that gank onto HFN doesn't really happen. Also, uh, fun to see a Bane that doesn't get a single point up and enfeeble. I like it. He's only level 7 anyways. It's a bit different from the game where Pilot, or PPD was just skipping the creep wave, trying to get Eternal Envy with it. Which way did he go, Abed? Found him instead. Hastrune's still got a little bit more duration on it. SK's on the way. The bar strike's gonna be too far out. <laughs> Terrific play just to get away. Had the Observer Ward planted, but uh, you can already see him pinging it, and that's gonna be free money for Pilot Eye. And I was confused for a second why he went for the TP out there, but it's because he's level 3 into that snare. So it's the full four seconds. Normally we see the 113 on the Naga at this point. So we actually had the control time to ensure he could escape from the Dragon Tail. Yeah, and at top, we Abed. Are. Yeah, blink him. It's on the DK. And with a follow up stun from Eternal Envy, they should have the damage. Maybe not when Duster put the storm down. He doesn't have and the angle. He actually got the angle. He's got the distance. He's Abed's got, got, got the blink. speed. One Running second, away. he's got a guess. Jump in, he's in the trees. No, he guesses wrong. 
It was the trees to the bottom, not the top, and it is in fact a disaster. That was so sick from Weeha. Didn't panic whatsoever. Gets enough move speed. Barely gets out of the range of lightning. You saw that Envy had the cast on him. Loses vision for just half a second. That's enough time to get Melina out of there. That would have been such a big pickup from Fnatic. That's a reveal of the Blink Dagger at the same time. They absolutely wanted to grab something like that. They waited for so long up there. Big props Highest to network Duster. in the game. Big props to Duster as well. Like, he bought We Hard that space, that time. And now they may even find themselves a kill. Thunder strikes onto Pylider. He knows he can't run away. There's an observe board as well to watch him. So, quick glimpse back. The wall doesn't properly connect, however. They have to run a little bit harder for this. The old Scepter into Lion Strike Array, and then they give the last hit to HFN. All working towards that Lincoln Sphere for himself. And he's almost got it too. Has the ultimate orb completed, just needs the recipe at this point. And that blink initiation here from DK is going to be a lot harder. Ensuring a Fiend's Grip from the Bane will have to come with some prep. The initiation from all of them will be really difficult at that point. They've got tons of ways to cancel everything on the side of Fnatic. Just a lot of single target if you look at their lineup. The only thing that'll really stop him is that Split Earth, but should have enough time to get Morph off in a game like this especially. They've got the reset of the Naga Siren coupled with it. Oh, Blink in. Oh, how quick was a Yule Scepter? Arped was just jumping forward. He sends him up and towards the air pod. I thought it was on, Here's but sleep. nothing is on. Everybody looks real tired. They're gonna rip tide. Focus Arped. No, the Storm is in a bad position as he cuts the fight out a little bit. Envy. DJ oh, over the top. DJ, DJ, DJ. It's the perfect epicenter. Double kill in for Arped, however, as Tavo has a rolling boulder away. The Yule Scepter will create a little bit more space, allowing Weeha to get up the hill. The chase can be on, but it's up further north. DJ, he already did the work to turn this fight around for Fnatic. And he'll get that extra pickup onto Tavo. Can they catch Weeha? Blink Dagger's off cooldown. The Dragon Tail Stun is there with the Breathe Fire. Lena doesn't have a lot to work with. Arped will go a little too deep to chase that underneath the Tier 3 tower. So they'll back up, but a huge fight for Fnatic. Pain missed pretty much everything that they could have missed there. They didn't get a good uh, Static Storm. Tavo didn't pop his ult in time. Wow, the sleep ended way out. too early. They just didn't anticipate any of it. And that's one of those fights I want to see again, and here it comes. So Pilot Eye comes in. Everyone thinks it's on. The Song of the Siren is out, but the SK ready to arrive from the southern part. They just didn't cast anything. <laughs> yep. And there's your epicenter, Lara Strike. DK just stands there wondering why he can't kill off Weeha. But. Damn. Not the fight Pain Gaming wanted. No, they thought they were going to stop that fight. And to be honest with you, I did too. It just felt like everyone froze for a second. Yep. Well, they have their item now. That's the Lincoln Sphere for the Morphling. A uh, little bit more, little bit more uh, protection for him. Weeha working his way towards a BKB. King RD mirroring all our thoughts. It was definitely questionable at best. <laughs> yes, Tavo. You are, you are a, uh, a god of the taunt and the roll. Bottom lane pressure's on once more from Universe, so... Uh... See, this, this, is, this is how pain... <laughs> this is how pain makes fans. <laughs> Style it. Style it. Keep it going. I think the players can at least hear if they're really loud. So I'm assuming Tomo has to know at this point that he's the one triggering all this. Yeah, if, if, if this crowd can get louder, then I'm fairly certain he'll continue. But wait for the next fight. Looks like uh, a group up for a smoke. Pilot Eye's got one behind that mid tier one tower. And there are a lot of Fnatic players ready to try and find some kind of opening on this map. Well away from all Radiant Observer Wards. And they're headed north. Because that's where the fight's already moving. DJ. He's waiting for the right time. That's where the taunting Tavo is. Yeah, Tavo. Look how just quickly they smoke. move. Arped. Yep, smoke breaks. A quick so double quick. away. And they're going to glimpse. Pulling the DK away from the fight. Disruptor takes it for the team. Five players from Fnatic. They get one support for this smoke movement. That was so quick. Tavo had barely half a second to react. Gets the swashbuckle off. Arped even came from the off angle. He didn't come from the river. He made his way all the way around. So they might lose the tier one tower up at top, but Fnatic, they're gonna lose this mid tier one if they're not careful. It's starting to get low. Yeah, they're just letting the creep wave do the work. 
I think they're more interested in uh, ganking Universe, but as no one's finishing this tier one tower in the mid, he's already on the defense, Disruptor, TPing towards the top lane. They need that vision on our bed to glimpse him back underneath the tower. Yeah, and once again, Fnatic, they just don't really commit for anything there. They pop the dragon form, you get a kill, at least grab the tower at top. Mm -hmm. This would be pretty huge, but instead they just split up and go for the farm once again. Yeah, they get the denial on the mid tower, but it's uh. It's just that thing, like, what was it? Uh, no, how's it saying? It'd be nice to let, like, Arbet off the leash. It'd be nice to let all of Fnatic off the leash. And part of the way you do that is you take towers. That's what creates pressure around the map. By not doing so, you eventually have to go back up there. It wastes even further time. They could have done this push with the first wave once they got the kill. So they just want to establish vision before they really take a good fight. Like, they didn't have an observed ward on the hill. I don't think it was actually available at the time. Oh, poor Bane. That's a lot of deaths. A lot of kills on top, but a lot of deaths on the heat map. Positive KD. 757. Not too shabby. Bottom lane is being pressured now by Payne, so HFN. Looking for a fight. They have the Observe Ward on the hill, so Payne Gaming know they've got the information. And they've got Song of the Siren, so even if things go a little bit awry, they can just burn that and then snare up the DK when he pops his BKB. Because that's something Lestrac hasn't got yet, so they've only got one target to control or potentially isolate if he does BKB and then you song. Everyone's getting a BKB on the side of HF. Uh, HFN's almost got one with the Lincolns. We saw Envy go for this build and he was heavily criticized for this. But in a game like this with so many single target stuns, a lot of magic damage, I think this is the right choice. Yeah, just makes sense. Nice stack for Weeha to farm while they're just continuously pressuring the bottom lane. And DJ, man, he's still looking pretty damn good. I'm, I'm always happy when I watch a, when I watch Fnatic play, and DJ's got really good items, like having Blink Dagger and Four Staff already, and he's got his eyes set on an Agadim Scepter. So the long range initiation, he really made that fight for Fnatic in mid, made the most of the opportunity that Pain gave, gave him. He is more or less a core for this team. They give him so much space. You notice that Envy is relegated to farming the jungle, and it's DJ that gets the main creeps in the lane. Well, it's like DJ's the only one who could also escape in the lane. Yes. I guess it's, it's, it's one of those rare times when Envy's not playing a hero, which can just try and jump away, like like, like the spec or like uh, uh, any of his safe lane heroes that he does. Does finish up the BKB himself. That's going to be crucial for them as Abed has one. And you'd like for Fnatic to take a fight at this point. Double BKB on your cores. Yep. Not really waiting for any item aside from that. Maybe the Blink Dagger from Universe. I'm still wondering if they are strong enough for it. Like, yeah, for a five on five fight, I think so for sure. The, con the concern is just the song of the siren. Like, how does that reset when you go for these single targets? Unless you get your Burrow Strike, at, like back, back Burrow Strike to come out, I mean, the which thing is about practically it Ravage. Is there's nothing that's really going to stop them once they just pop double BKB. As long as they're patient, they'll just pop the BKBs after the sleep, and nothing will touch them. That's why I think they should take the fight at this point. Well, they might be able to force it by looking in towards Roshan. Pilot Eye is currently doing it solo. Um, not exactly what he wants, takes the damage, gets it back with the Brain Sap. And yeah, they're gonna start it up for Fnatic, so they look towards Roshan, the ping comes pretty early on. That was out from King RD, he can TP over towards that shrine, just song it up. Because no one's defending the tier 2 tower, the illusions have made the long run up. They got 7 more seconds to get into that pit, and the timing will be perfect to get a lot of information. DJ will borrow strike and get rid of him. Roshan at 2.3k. The TPs are coming slow, they're smoked up, they're jumping over. And well, where is this song? Roshan already down, Aegis Immortal into the hands of the Lashrak. Rolling ball to forward from Tarva, but he's so far away from the rest of his team. Finding the initiation just is not there for pain. Fnatic, get away with it. Hey. And they smoke, they try and turn it straight away. We're pulling the Rocks Kiss. Weeha. Looks like he's gonna be the target, he has BKB, but if they can get the stun off from DJ first, BKB spamming these yours. neutrals, is he fast enough? Oh no! They win! Yes! He misses the Burrow Strike, the BKB is out, but Pilot Eye has a Fiend's Grip. They can still hold Weeha in position. DJ with the rare whiff. Uh, see, this is why you're not meant to like raise up a player. Okay, he's got fantastic items. Oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, DJ. But you got it out of your system now. It's okay, Pi recovered that. He did. Still looks scary for a second. And Very nice move from Fnatic. That's yep. an aggressive play with the Aegis. And now I'd really like to see them take tier two towers. Like, they're farming up the creeps, which are on the pain gaming side of the map. <laughs> uh, the top lane was pushed out a long way. The Nagasara and Center Illusion, so they're continuously rift hiding. 
and forcing to the tier two tower. Universe went to the bottom way to try and re-push this as well. So they're always looking behind themselves, Fnatic. And it's only when they had like the Aegis, the Immortal Opportunity, like, okay, yeah, now we can go for something. And they've got better teamfight items arriving. So the pipe was already done for Universe. He's now got the Blink Dagger. That's gonna sync up nicely with DJ and gives the big teamfight initiation that Fnatic really want. And the space that Envy wants to have too. I think he really regretted not getting in in the last game. We saw how difficult it was for him to just get in. He was surging, trying to get back your walls off. Yep. In the very final fight, he wasn't even able to get the wall off as a result of that. Yeah. When he had the blink dagger, he had the one target, but at that point, it was too late to initiate. Universe is underneath that Observer Ward, so the hunt is on. Weeha, Shadow Blade wears off, but at the perfect time, Yule set this up, goes for the stun. Tavo is trying to help out. He has a rolling thunder and blink his way forward. And DJ support, he came in to help out. Now Glimpse only back towards the mid lane and it pushes him away from Eternal Envy. Rooted, controlled. DK needs to keep the song to Weeha to stop him from attacking. Where's his epicenter? Where's the control? Naga turns the song of the siren on. DJ, he's waiting for the right opportunity, but he knows he can only get the retreating heroes and he found one. Duster right on the rune spot. Eternal Envy will slow him down with the lightning and they have enough magical drag out life. That's what the brain sap is for, for Bane to get the kill onto the disruptor. Maybe Tavo as well. Barra strike from DJ catches him in mid lane. DK is already starting his rotation, so Tavo, you can bounce down, but DK is ready. He even steals the regeneration room from him right in front of him. He can cancel that regeneration room with a swashbuckle, but he does not escape from this. <laughs> Fnatic getting back to back kills. Weeha may not be done. He's watching. But I don't think he believes he can get it. There's way too many heroes around right now. He's got to reset this right now, and HFN continues to just continue to look for farm. Naga, Mara Strike catches the real one. He's trying to juke it out with the illusions, but they find the real one. King RD, locked control, brought down, and Arbed becoming unstoppable. 6-1-3 for him. Blink, forward, distrust. Is there nowhere Duster can hide? A double kill for Arbed, and they're looking for more. They head down to bottom lane. So Eternal Envy, the Agus Immortal pops. And you've got Lena Weeha on the run. He denies the town, but he doesn't have the a wave. TP scroll. He TPs down to the wave. So Eternal Envy can keep the chase going on to Weeha. The BKB is protecting them both as Weeha needs to juke it in the trees. Goes up, goes down, goes round, goes in, and he's out. He's got 95 HP, passes the creep wave, but remember, still no TP. He'll get that from the side jump. Back HFN. in mid lane, they jump onto HFN, finding the kill. Tarbo rolling thunder, trying to create space, but Arbet doesn't care when the BKB protects him. And Fnatic, 28 minutes in, enter the high ground of Pain's base. HFN with a really costly death, second of the game since the laning phase, but... A minute down to, on the blink! There's your jump from Arbet's base, not created, Duster will fall as well. Pain Gaming, continuous pickoffs from Fnatic. And Tavo might just die too. Position. Here we go, one by one. Tavo, Fnatic saw that Lazarus array coming from a mile away. Tavo is forced to buy back. Weeha, he's hoping for some kind of initiation, but what do you want? You want Arbed? This guy with strength traits goes up to 2.7k. Not to mention the armor. 34 armor they have to get through on him. They're king towards mid too. Oh, blink, forward, gets the back wall, King Red. He's already gonna put out the Song of the Siren. Weeha's just building up a couple of charges and making more copies of himself. They don't find anything. I think they're trying to buy time for Morphling to, to respawn. Four seconds for it, but Naga just sacrifice her own life for it. And really, Duster, he just can't catch a break. Fnatic have the jump range initiation. So Naga will buy back. Morphling, now is your chance to try and fight. They've still got a couple of illusions from that Dark Seal wall that's helping Fnatic with this push. The jump forward from Tavo, the Rolling Thunder. They find their target, but Arbit with a stun! The back! Barra Strike Epicenter! It's sweet from Fnatic, and GG is already called! Fnatic Cake take game two in just under 30 minutes to give us a decider for the third place. Unbelievable. Pain, just losing hero after hero after hero. The bleeding never stopped at any point. Felt like Fnatic got the last 20 kills of that game. Mm -hmm. How to take Fnatic off the leash, continue to put a bait right in front of them that they want to keep going for. Opportunities just continue to present themselves from Pain. Yeah, the worst part about that was that mid-engagement where they drop everything, nobody dies, they lose three heroes. Yep. Shortly after that, they give up Roshan. They didn't contest that either. It took too long. Like they needed to actually, where did they, they, they TP to the tier two tower, right? And then they smoked up to run out. 
as opposed to getting out to the shrine. It just felt like Pain Gaming were always like a step behind after the 10 minute mark and Fnatic, they make the most out of it. It was a great game for EE. At the end of the day, he went 8 one eleven. It was 9-1-9 for our bet. The two cores really heavily untouched for that entire game. And the only one who did damage, like, is really Weeha. He went over 16,000 damage. And he dominated his lane, but... He really did. I really like what Fnatic did this game. They prioritized helping out Envy. Because in the other game, they just completely left him alone, didn't really help him at any point. This time around, they yep. made sure that he had the best trying lane possible. They knew that Universe was going to be fine against Tavo by himself. Yep. Abed died early on, but they were like, we don't care. Envy's having a very good game. Yeah. We're going to secure his, and then we'll worry about everything else. I wonder if that game would have gone differently, too, if Tavo's rotation to the top lane was successful and he didn't get stunned up, because that seemed to fuel the fire that was the defensive try lane of Fnatic, and all that farm, all that space he got for Tavo against Darkseer, it was meant to do something, and, uh, well, the best control that he brought was the attack against Bane. That was the best moment he had. That was the best moment any of them had. All right, so fantastic game. Can't wait for game three. Bring it, bring it on. <laughs> game three indeed, yes. We'll try and bring it on, Toby, as uh, we uh, reflect back on a game two, which has tied things up for Fnatic. Well done to the boys in orange, Alan. Impressed? They've made a comeback. We weren't sure that they had it in them. Absolutely. And after a very uneven performance in game one, I thought Envy picked it up in game two, very steady on the Lesh Rack, in good position in all of those fights. Finishes the game 8 1 and 11, exactly what they needed from their safe winner. Yeah, after only playing it three times in the last, yeah. I don't know how many, two, yeah, twice think, in 2013 and once in 2016. I think it's the fourth Lesh Rack game yeah. of his career. It sure incredible. didn't look like it. No, it didn't. I mean, he's played it plenty of times in the pubs, but it's different folk, isn't it? No, definitely. I thought he played... I was actually impressed with Envy this game. He was making rotations around. They were really good about just using their control in this game. That was the biggest thing for me. They were always there with like multiple people stunning, and that's what we talked about on the on this before when we went to the game, was there is a lot of lockdown on Fnatic constantly, and we saw even at the end game scenario where Morphling gets double stunned twice back to back. He dies once, comes back, dies again instantly, and the game just ends. I like the fact that they didn't rush this game very much as Fnatic. Uh, I feel like you know, I'll oftentimes complain that Fnatic play uh, a bit too slow, especially when they have their harder carry and they draw games quite a bit. But when they do have a lineup like this, I do appreciate the fact that they don't rush themselves too much. They didn't, like, if I was in that position, I would have been re very worried about the BKB timings of Lena and Morphling. Yeah. Um, but they actually just maintained steady control of the game and just built this net worth lead more and more. So it came to a point where when Morphling did have a BKB, it actually didn't matter that much because his offensive threat was very little. Yeah, and they I got like him on the instant disables. Yeah, they, they still were instant right. disables. Two instant, so. And I don't know, it, it, I felt pain made a lot of mistakes this game, though. Mm. Like more than I've seen them make in a very long time. It was yeah. a lot of miscommunication, it seemed like, between the uh, Naga Siren and the Disruptor, and also Tavo. That mid fight in particular we just saw be like before. He was like stop canceling his pango ult. They like missed the kinetic field, and they were, it just looked super awkward. And that happened, I think, three times that I noticed at least in the game. So. Yeah, they actually in that situation he can perma stun the DK between the bounce in that that middle wave, and then if Lena's on the other position, like he just instantly blows yeah. up the bait, right? He yeah. LSA off of the sleep. If they've been more coordinated, they could have had a one-two punch where one support is dead and a core is locked down, and that fight could have looked a little bit better. It was still, as you said. I think you pointed out it was it was actually a bad setup to begin with yeah. because of the Bane uh, or the Disruptor Naga Siren disjoint. It was, yeah, it was really it was just really peculiar after what we saw the other day against Liquid, them running Naga Jakiro and them understanding the spacing so well behind the Pangler in those fights. There were just a couple of fights, you know, you saw the song and the static storm drop at the same time on a yeah. disengage. Yeah, I, I was going to ask you about that. It's not like they're not comfortable with those heroes. No. They've played that draft particularly before, yep. so they know how it works. What, what do you think threw them off in this game? I think they just, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you just can make some mistakes, and I think overall, too, Fnatic had a really strong, they had a strong composed lineup. Yep. Like it, it ticked all the boxes. They had a building hitter. Maybe the thing they lacked a bit was that like late game, but they didn't need it in this game. They took over, they had so much disable that, so much disable in team fight that it didn't matter. They ran this lineup against Liquid, and yeah, they crushed Liquid, but the thing was that Liquid's lineup was not capable of fighting back very That's, easily, yeah. right? And I think this lineup from Fnatic was made of team fighters. They actually had um, so much ability to be able to battle back against Pain that they were never going to be able to do that thing where they run these four heroes that are super aggressively and win out in yeah. four versus five scenarios. They are actually going to be on the losing side this time. 
And they have the bane to solidify their lane, too, yeah. in the beginning, right? I think that was really important, actually, because top, they did it again. They were like, we're doing this aggro. We're trying to punish Fnatic, but this time, you're into a bane, which makes life a lot harder. Yeah, it's crazy. We talked about that hero at the beginning of the day backstage as being possibly a key in the second series of the day, yep. and it's ended up being so important in this one. It seems like there's these, like, these, just these lane dominators, these Bane, apparently for these teams for Fnatic, the Undyings, maybe the Ogre in some scenarios, just seem to be very dominant. And, and for me, the reason that they do that aggro try lane is because of their Pangolier pick. Yeah, right? exactly. They're all trying exactly. to set it up, and it feels like that they're trying really too cool. hard to set up. I was not a fan of the aggro try lane in the first game. It worked out, but I feel like there was lane adjustments you could have made that would have yeah. defeated that. In game two, I mean, this time around, Fnatic just went toe to toe for it, exactly. and then you like, okay, you've created space for a pango, but and but that's the do thing, that right? That's the thing I say about aggro tries in this meta is that they just succeed or fail spectacularly. Yeah, it's well, just such a high risk laning setup. They also gave Tavo that you know that safe lane. He TP top and died instantly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. so, <laughs> they okay. set him up yes. to have a good start. He was doing pretty decent, then he just he kind of fed. But yeah, yeah. all right, thank you very much. It was great of you. Uh, break time for us here is our one Birmingham, but we're all tied up in the third place game between Pain and Fnatic. Just the one game left to find out who finishes in the bronze position, and that's coming up next. It's for Benaga. She'll sacrifice Duster her own again. Board, and really? Duster, he just can't catch a break. Fnatic have the jump range initiation, so Naga will buy back. Morphling, now is your chance to try and fight. They've still got a couple of illusions from that Dark Sea of Wall that's helping Fnatic with this push. The jump forward from Tarvo, the rolling thunder. They find their target, but Arvin with a stun! The fact! Barry Strike MP Center! It's sweet from Fnatic, and GG is already cold! Fnatic take, take game two in just under 30 minutes to give us a decider for the third place.